Hello, I'm Warlord. Once again, we've got a lot to cover. There's going to be three iClone segments instead of two, and there's going to be another extended Studio Max segment on low poly modeling showing how to use extrude and bevel. Now remember, if you have any questions, go to iClonerevolution.com and use the contact form to get to me. Otherwise, it'll go in spam. Well, we got a lot to do, so let's get started, and thanks for joining me. Now let's take a look at creating a reflective floor. I've gone over this before, but I've been getting a few questions about it lately. And the only way I can create a reflective floor is to use water. So let's go to set, water, still normal folder, and water number six. I think it's supposed to be ice or something like that. I'm not sure. It has no wave action in it. I'll shut off the grid. And then this floor will basically reflect the environment around it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this to black. Say I want to create a black reflective environment. Well, as you'll notice, it's just gray right now. Now, let's, let me show you something else, too. You can come in here and jump in with sky. And as you can see, that has an effect. But if you want a solid color, what you're going to have to do is go to Stage, 2D Background, uncheck the Active 2D Background, then select your color. And this way, you'll have a solid reflective floor. Now, you're going to notice some limitations in this. If you go to start adding uh, props, all kinds of things to it, then it's going to naturally change your floor. If you change uh, enough of it, it may change the entire color of the reflection or something like that. But this is how I go about getting my reflective floors for product presentations and things like that. We have two characters here. One's a supersized character that's already animated. And then I have a regular character linked to the top. Now I select the regular character because I'm ready to animate it. Go into motion, motion puppet. Let me move it over here so you can see what's going to happen. Select uh, my motion, hit preview, and the character jumps out of place. Well, the only way to really solve that that I found is to go ahead and select your character and just unlink it. And you're also going to have to go ahead and right click and remove all animation. If you have uh, reach target or something like that, you'll have to go back and reset them. Now all you're ready to do is go ahead and relink the character. Now let's see what happens. And there you have it. Now you can go ahead and animate your character. I get a lot of questions about lighting, so let's just take a look at how these lights are actually set up. And I've got the lights visibility turned on so you can see them. Now as far as the flashlight goes, I'm using this point light attached to the end of this cone, which is the flashlight beam. Now this is personal preference as to where you set that. But this gives the actual light source at the end of the flashlight. The headlights are strictly two more spotlights. And you can link these if the car is moving, you can link them. Or if you need to conserve lights, you can use one light and move it to the center and get, get a pretty good effect. That's how we're getting those two lights. Now, this light that's rotating, this is the actual light that comes out of the light room. And all I've done is attach it to a dummy so that I can use it. So all we have to do is load that, attach it, and change the color. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what I'm talking about. So what we're going to do is, uh, let's go back in stage, light, and let's reload our lighting. And let's go back here to where we can see. Now you can't do anything with this kind of lighting unless you see where the light is. So that's why we have to use the visibility. Now we can see where the light is. We grab our dummy. And you want the dummy to be somewhere near the light, of course. Not exactly, maybe. And now all we have to do is attach, well not attach, link. You can't attach a light. We'll link each light to this dummy. Then we'll use the dummy to move the lights. 
Now another thing we can also do is come in here and adjust the lights. And so there'll be a little more separation in the shadow. You can change the angle. But remember, when you go to move the light, be sure you grab the dummy. Not the light itself. Now we can get a little closer. Now also, this is an old-fashioned light with red on both ends. So all we have to do is just come in here and change this to red. And you just set things to your center it and set things to your preference. And if you wanted to, you could attach that dummy to this car and it move with it. So basically, that's all there is to setting up these lights. Just remember that you can always use your spotlights and your point lights linked to anything and get some movement with it. Now in this Studio Max segment, we're going to take a look at low poly modeling. We're not going to model a ship, but we are going to model a helmet, which surprisingly enough will be about the same polys because it's going to be done in the same manner. But let's deconstruct this ship right quick. So you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. Because low poly really is kind of a state of mind. You've got to plan it from the beginning. You can't work backwards to it. So this is the top of the cockpit. All right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start undoing these modifiers. Now this just caps the holes from when I've cut out mesh. Now this is where I removed that part of the tail because I had modeled it like this with extrusions and things. So I removed it with this particular edit mesh modifier. These are almost like layers. Then this is before I model that tail. Then this is before I modeled anything, when it was just basically half, half of a, a sphere. And of course I have a shell around it, so it would actually uh, be two-sided. Now, let's unhide the others. And let's hide this. This is just a duplicate that I cut out of what you just saw, so I'm going to hide it. Now this is where the fun really starts at. And we're going to deconstruct this right quick. Okay, as you can see, this is where I constructed part of the tail and added some UV mapping. Now this is where I added the couch detail with extrusion, beveling, things like that. This is more where I added the shell, just finishing off the interior. Now this is where I'm modeling the couch and the console. Now we're back to just basically a sphere. That was just a shell. Now here you can see the basis of all of this. Now this wasn't textured in this form, it was textured after the fact. But watch what happens when I take Spherify off. This actually starts off as a box. And that's one of the reasons it starts off as low poly. Spherify also gives you a different kind of sphere, and I have it crushed down with scale. But it gives you a little more squared off look, uh, and we'll, we'll use it here in a minute for a helmet. But watch as this goes up the modifier stack. And yes, the polys will change because as you extrude, you add faces. Now we unhide all, and you end up with your spacecraft. So let's make a tune helmet because it's easy and it demonstrates the concept I'm trying to get across. So for that, we're just going to start with a simple box, just like spacecraft. We're not even going to be concerned with size or height or anything like that. Then I'm going to hit number 7 to turn on my poly count so I can see on the 12 polys. But we're going to need more than that to work with. So I'm going to go in and change each one of these segments to 6. <clears throat> You'll notice now we're up to 432 polys. Now the next thing I'm going to do is go to my modifier stack and I'm going to grab a spherify. Now, as you can see here, it gives us a little different sphere. You've got from 0 to 100. I'm going to go ahead and go all the way. But that's, again, that's personal preference. And now I'm going to add an Edit Poly. I'm going to select Polygon. And what I want to do right now is select the faceplate. Or what we want to be the faceplate. So I'm holding down Shift. And I'm just selecting, this is personal preference, whichever one you want to be the faceplate. And let's make it just a little bigger. One more. 
screen like that. Yeah. Now I've got those selected. So let's go to bevel. Bevel it in. Or extrude, I should say, extrude it in. Now we bevel. And you and can also do this by group normal, where it's set now, by local normal, which changes a little bit, or by polygon, which does it individually. We'll just stick with group normal right now. And also, while we have this done, let's go ahead and let's detach it because it'll be our faceplate. Now, let's just put a little more detail on. Let's come over to the side. And let's go to the other side and grab the same, same polygon. Always check to make sure you have them. Now, let's go ahead and go to bevel. Make that a little smaller. Now I'm going to go to inset. Make it even smaller again. Now this is just preference. Now I'm going to go to bevel once again. Bevel it out. Widen it out a little more. And we'll leave it like that. Now, we have our helmet. Let's go ahead and do the color. We'll name this helmet. Name this visor, faceplate, whatever you want to call it. And let's smooth it out a little. We're only at 284 for both of these, but this is going to significantly increase it. Let's go to Mesh Smooth, and we need to do it on both of them. And Mesh Smooth actually has three different subdivision methods, NURBS, Quad Output, and Classic. In this particular case, I'm using NURBS. Now, if you, I don't ever cut the bottom out of something like a tune helmet. You could do that. But what I would do would just be to use a torus there for the neck or something like that. We can create the torus here, or we can go into uh, iClone and create the torus. It doesn't matter. We'll just go ahead and do it here. Now, if you wanted to use opacity, to take this torus off and not use it once in iClone because you didn't like it or anything. You wouldn't want to use the same black if that's the color you were going to use as your visor because once you undid your opacity, it would do away with your visor too. So let's go ahead and make this black also or whatever your preference is. And I'll just call that neck. Okay, now we're ready to export and we'll resize it once we get it uh, into 3D Exchange. Okay, we're in a 3D Exchange and I'm going to import it. Now we can go ahead and scale it down some here and finish it off in iClone. Scale it down about 35%. And reset transform. Now we'll go ahead and export it. Then we're ready to go to iClone. Now I've already got Jimmy Tune loaded. That's the character that I'm using. Go to props. I exported that into work. Okay, there's the helmet. We'll bring it up. Now you can size this helmet and things 
on your own. I'm not going to take a lot of time to do that because you should basically know how to do that anyway. And you can size it like this, scale it any way you want. He has a big nose. And anyway, you can spend more time on it than that. And then what we want to do is we want to spruce up those colors a little. Let's add a little reflection to the visor. You notice here where it says visor, helmet. That's because we named them. Add a little reflection to the helmet. And let's cut it back. Now we'll use that to change the skin color. Then we'll grab the black. We'll use that for gloves and shoes. And of course you'd want to attach this. Helmet. We'll attach it to the character head and if you're going to actually use this character and you have Gorf or something like that I would load Gorf export the persona with the right clip then go in and load the Gorf persona and use it instead of Timmy or Jimmy or whatever his name is and that way actually you can use any persona you want but I just thought this kind of fit the character a little more Well, here we are at the end of another show. I appreciate you joining me, and I hope you'll join me next time. Until then, create and animate.